Okay, welcome everybody to our be beginner training for March. All right, so go ahead and type in your questions and we'll get started. I also um, wanted to just share a few things. Some customers have written in to me and with questions and I'm just gonna start off by showing a couple of those while you guys are writing your questions. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and share SHS. All right, everybody can see my SHS program, I think. So somebody asked me, um, and this is sort of a, a homeopathic as well as a functionality question. How can you tell um, with the rubric weaning ailments, how can you tell if it relates to the mother or the child? And so I just wanna show you one trick that you can do weaning ailments. That's how I find the rubric in global search. All right. And so here we have this rubric that I found in the reliable repertory. And you see how all the remedies in the rubric have the asterisk. Um, that means it has a reference string. So if I position my mouse on the remedy name, right click to get the menu options that you see here, and then I go to view reference string. And that takes you to this window. And here you can see, for instance, this particular remedy, allium sativum, it relates to the mother, clearly. There's a swelling of the breast after weaning. Um, you know, and on down the line, this argent argentum relates to children, the diarrhea after trigger candy of children after weaning, et cetera. So I just wanted to show that, that the reference string is an excellent way to show the context of remedies within rubrics. So that was that. Um, and, and then another person wrote in to ask more about saving and the clipboards. So I wanted to walk through the various saving options. So today we're gonna to cover that. And I have a clipboard ready to go. Let's pretend like I had somebody come in who's a follow-up and I haven't opened the chart yet. I've just gone ahead and I've created a clipboard based on the new symptoms, maybe some of the similar symptoms. Anyway, it's a new clipboard for this follow-up patient. And I want to now place it in the chart. What I do is I come up here to patient management. Now I could go to view patients and open the chart. I could do that. But the easier option is to save to existing patients. When you click here, um, you actually um, get, you, you get your menu up as well. And it's very to the point. And so let's say that we have to put this, uh, let's say that Sally Brown, these are all made up people, by the way. Um, let's say that Sally Brown is the person who has had the follow-up. And so I check her chart and I hit open. Okay. And so now you can see um, all her consultations and the, you know, the dates and different remedies that have been given come to the forefront. You can see them right here. On the now, this is European time, remember, and it's obvious when you have something like February 15th. Sometimes it's not as obvious, but just remember this over here is always in European time. So you have February 15th was the last appointment. Now, the gray line that shows you that this particular consultation is open, and when it opened, the clipboard that was in that consultation shows up down here. So previously we had just the one clipboard with the six rubrics on it. But now that that consultation date from the February 15th is open, um, now you can see the clipboard from that date. And so you can decide, um, you know, do I want to keep this clipboard in my new session or just have the new clipboard? That's completely up to you. So what you have to do to create a new line with today's date is come over here and hit save as new. If you were to hit update here, 
the consultation um, date for February 15th would remain the same. And, you know, it, you would, you, you, when you hit update, you get uh, always, you always get that window that asks you which clipboards do you want to put in this session? And you could choose to put this new clipboard in the consultation line of February 15th, but this is March, so I'm not sure why you would want to do that. So therefore I am gonna hit save as new. So I hit save as new, this window comes up. You need to remember that clipboards that, um, clipboards that were previously saved are always selected. And so if I'm somebody who doesn't want that old clipboard to carry over into this March session, I'm going to untick it and I'm going to only choose my new clipboard. So you have to be very aware um, of what you're doing with this window because you wanna make sure that the clipboard that you want is going in the session line. Um, um, and so I do want clipboard number one with six rubrics, the new clipboard to go in the new session. So I'm saving that first clipboard. And now you can see March 10th session line has been created. And you can see that the new clipboard is the only one showing. Now, anytime you can click on an older session line and you see what's happening now, that clipboard from that session is appearing. Because I saved the new clipboard to the new session line and that session line isn't chosen right now, that new clipboard is no longer showing because I'm, I'm on the older session. And you can go down the line here and any clipboards, um, you see that, you know, certain sessions had, you know, three clipboards. This first session had three clipboards. And, you know, you just, you can get back to old clipboards by clicking on the old session line. But if you want the new one, you come back up here and we're back to the new. Now, let's say you've created your new session line and all of a sudden you're thinking to yourself, you know, I need, I needed to put one more rubric. I needed to put one more rubric on that clipboard. Um, I wasn't quite ready to save. And so um, you can do that. So let's go find another, the other rubric. Let's say that it had to do with, um, you know, uh, insomnia. Or I'm actually gonna show you something because the word insomnia doesn't show up so much in the repertory. So I'm gonna show you something else while I'm doing this. Let's put the word insomnia up there in global search. All right, and I'm gonna come down here to sleep. And you can see it's a very small rubric. Um, when I come down to the complete to see what kind of information it has, doesn't even have a rubric. Um, you know, it's grayed out. So what let's do, let's double click. Whenever you're in global search and you want to jump to that rubric in repertory module, you double click. So I'm in, remember I'm in global search over here. I'm gonna double click on this. It's going to take me to that rubric in the complete 22. And now um, it's, I wanna turn on cross references because I want to have insomnia, but I wanna know what rubric do I need to, to use? And again, this is, so I'm gonna turn on cross references. Okay, okay. And now I see my, I see, it's, it's the program has given me the answer through cross-references. Oh, I need to go to sleeplessness. So I'm gonna click on that. Okay, and there it is. You click on it to get to it. Um, and now I'm going to put this rubric into the clipboard simply by hitting return on my keyboard. You see the new rubric was added. And now I wanna update my patient chart with this new rubric on the clipboard. So I'm gonna come back over to patient management, which is this folder on the left-sided icon palette. And I want to now update. I'm gonna update. You, um, you've created something new here, so you have to update your chart. So I'm gonna hit update. That's the only clipboard available. Yes, I'm gonna save that one. And now that is saved to your patient chart with the seven rubrics on it. And so I'm gonna close this and I'll go back in and you see the clipboard disappeared. Once you save a clipboard to a chart, 
it goes with the chart when you close the chart. So I'm going to come back and we're going to find those, um, find that clipboard with uh, seven rubrics again. And this is the one I want. See, you choose the one you want and it opens up and there's my rubric and it does have the seven, it, there's my clipboard and it does have the seven rubrics. Um, any questions about that, Maggie? <laughs> Not about that specifically, uh, Lucy. Okay. Amber is asking, um, she's saying, I would love to witness more how to compile a whole case with symptoms chosen in rubrics, start to finish with the clipboard. And then she well, also says, yeah, go ahead. How do you put how do you put in the remedy chosen into the clipboard? Um, I think she the must mean rubric chosen, you mean? Yeah. She might, well, rubric. Remedy, but I, I think she must mean rubric. Uh, Amber, I assume you mean rubric chosen into a clipboard. I think no, so. The new, uh, says, okay, so let me show you that. Um, Lucy, so, she's replying back to say no, the new remedy for the patient into the clipboard. Oh, oh, oh into into the, the I think she must mean into you the mean patient. the chart into the chart. Okay, so here I am on this um, this current consultation line, and you see the remedies I've given before are you know listed here. Let's open up the clipboard and just you know. Let's say that we decided to now, now she needs um, sepia. Let's say we decided on that or, or next Monica, it covers all the rubrics. Um, and so you just come down here. You, this is the part where you change the information. Um, if, you know, if the, she's given you comments, their new symptoms, uh, there's maybe some new attachment that you could do. Um, this, you know, it's on the right side. It's where you enter all that. At the bottom is where you would enter the new remedy. You hit add. And I'm going to put Nuxomica in here. Okay. And now I'm going to update again. So anytime you've added new information, you're going to update, update, same clipboard. And now you can see that that remedy was added over here on the session line. Now, uh, I think I answered your question, Amber. As far as cases go, I didn't prepare one, but there are lots of videos. Like we have um, all the trainings from, from previous sessions. Um, we do have them up in YouTube. And a lot of them do take a case from start to finish. Um, so I definitely recommend you go and look at some of those. Mm -hmm. I'll put the link for that in there now. Okay, thanks, Maggie. Um, Bev is asking, can you demonstrate how to keep a clipboard from session to session? I edit and change my main clipboard from session to session with mm. patients or add a new clipboard, but I want to be able to see all the clipboards in each session. Gotcha. In that case, um, what you do then is let's, let's close this. And I'm just going to go and um, I'm going to throw some rubrics on a clipboard. We're just making one up, you know, just so I'll have some rubrics on it. Okay, so I've got that. Now let's go into patient management and we're going to open up a patient. Um, here, we'll open up this one. Okay, and so you've got, um, you've got all the old sessions. There you go. So you see, I've got two old clipboards that opened up from the session on November 23rd, and I've got my new clipboard. In that case, what you have to do is you're gonna to save to a new session line. So you do wanna save, you wanna save as new here because you want the new session line to reflect today's date, right? So you hit save as new, and now you select all the clipboards. You select old and new, and now you hit save. And now see the session line has all the clipboards. You can see all three of them. Whereas before, when I didn't, br when I didn't bring those old clipboards over to the new session, it only showed the new clipboard. But now that I'm, uh, now I chose all the clipboards in that clipboard window and they're, they all carried over to this new session, which you can see here. Um, Cause that session is open. It's the one that's grayed out. 
the one that's gray, I should say. And all three are there when I click on the session prior to that, which is November 23rd, you've just got the two, the, those two that I brought forward. Did that answer your question, Beth? So it's a matter of selecting clipboards and that's where that window is very important. Amber says, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. What other questions are coming up? Um, yeah, Beth says, thank you. <laughs> you're welcome, Beth. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Well, um, <clears throat> another thing I just want to point out when you're using global search, <clears throat> excuse me one second. <clears throat> um, it's really good to use that or proximity language, you know, because sometimes you've got one word in your head, but it's really good to put a couple of different related words to find the best rubric. Let me give you an example. So for instance, if I say around eyes and I'm going to activate this. Oh, and I also want to show how to put the, no, I answered that already, Never mind. Okay, so, so here I have this result and of course it comes in chapter by chapter and I want to go down to the um, eyes. Let's go check there dark around the eyes, discoloration, you know. Um, I'm actually looking for, <laughs> I was looking for myself. I do have some irritation around my eye. So anyway, I was looking for eruption around the eyes. And um, this one though, doesn't really have what I'm looking for. I could go look on face, certainly. Okay, just call it bluish, red eruptions, blah, blah, blah. That's very small rubrics. And so let's, let's go ahead and use the or. I'm gonna show you how important it is. So to use or, I use my forward slash <clears throat> and I say about, I'm gonna say about. Now, if you don't remember that you can use the forward slash, remember that over here we have the proximity language icon and you can always open that up and you can select or, but of course I wanna do it in the right place. So let me backspace and do it again. And now I'm gonna say under eyes. So now I've got three things I'm asking the program to look for, around, about, and under. And of course I could put the word eruption, I could, but I kind of wanna leave it open and just kind of see what I get. So I'm going to hit return. Go back down to eyes. <clears throat> and do you see here, eye eruptions about the eyes? So that's a nice, you know, that's a decent rubric. I would definitely take that one to the clipboard. So I just wanted to show that, how it's really important to broaden searches so that the program is looking for, you know, all possibilities of a concept. All right, any questions? Not right now, Lucy. What, what have people been um, having trouble with? Um, let's go into a clipboard. Actually, that's a very small clipboard. This is your time to ask questions if you're, if you're having mm -hmm. you know, some, some questions about how to work certain things. Andreas uh, was saying that um, he noticed sometimes he is asked to save his clipboard, even if he has already saved it, he's asked to save it again. And I'm just saying that that's a, an issue that we recognize and that we're working to resolve. Yes, yes. It typically happens when you've saved and then gone away from your computer for a little while. For some, um, that they, they've kind of figured out. Anyway, we are working on a resolution for that. And hopefully by the next um, update, which I'm not even gonna give you a date for it because we keep saying it's coming out soon. Soon is stretching, um, 
but let's see. All right, people, it's time to ask questions. What are you, what are you getting hang, hung up on in SHS? While you guys are thinking of questions, I'm gonna come into the reference library. You can see that I'm in the reference library now. Um, and I just wanna point out again, something that does hang people up sometimes. In reference library, you can search by remedy or book. When you have remedies selected, the type to search window right below there is for remedy names. And when you're in books, the type to search window is for the author book name. Um, so sometimes people get confused about that. Now let's say you wanted to look up two remedies in, in one book. Um, let's say we wanted to go to pairings, guiding symptoms. And I'm gonna, I, I could just click on herrings guiding symptoms. And then the first remedy, the one that begins with A in his book, let's open up his book. And actually about the book would come up. If I just clicked on the book name, then about the book would come up first and all the remedies would be below there. But let's say you wanna hone in on a particular remedy. I can open up the book um, and then move my cursor down into the book contents. See with the down arrow. And now let's say I wanna find Nuxlamica. I'm gonna type N-U-X on my keyboard and now I've popped down to the Nuxes and I'm gonna choose Nuxlamica as my first remedy. And let's say I wanted to compare that. Let's say I wanted to compare that with um, Pulsatilla maybe. So I just typed on my keyboard P-U-L and now I've popped down here, but I don't wanna click it or it will replace Nuxvomica up there as the single tab. I'm going to right click, control click with a Mac and open this in a new window. And you can keep doing that, um, opening up new tabs in that way. You hover your mouse, you right click, you get the message open in a new window. And you know you can just go back and forth. And let's say now, let's X out of this. Let's say I wanted to go explore Nox Vomica in, in multiple books. I would hop over to Remedies, type Nox Vomica, open up Nox Vomica by clicking on the plus sign. And now you choose your books. And I'm going to get into the, I'm going to get into the books by using my down arrow. And let's say I did want herrings again, if that was a book I wanted, I come down here and I click on, because I don't have a tab open already, I go ahead and just click on herrings to open the first tab. It's when you want a second, third or fourth tab. That's when you right click to open a new tab. Um, let's say we also wanted, let's say, I'm gonna come down here and I'm going to right click, open with a in a new window. Now I've got my two tabs, both with Nux Vomica. So. Lucy, while you're there, do you also want to show the type to search window? I think it's quite good. Oh yes, okay. And so let's say that in your case, um, there's a cough. And so you want to you want to find all the instances of cough in in these books for next vomica. So this type to search window, I'm going to just put the word cough and I'm going to hit return or enter. <clears throat> and you see up here it says there there's 61 instances in herring's guiding symptoms, and they're highlighted. You can see they're highlighted. So I could just come up here and click through them. You know, once I've read the one that I'm looking at here, I can click on the sign, um, the arrow to go to the next one. There it is. Read that. And you could just keep going down and reading about the cough. And then you could do the very same thing in Lippe. Come over here to this book. And you see here that it has four instances of cough. It's a shorter, it's not as... Um, complex, it's, it's not, it doesn't have as much information as herrings. So there are fewer instances of the word cough, but you can see them right there. 
Yeah, it's a, it's a really good way to hone it. When you're in Materia Medica and you're trying to, you know, hone in on one concept in a book that has a lot of information, it is very good to use the type to search window. Any other questions? I think I just saw one come in. No. Oh, oh. Right. yeah, yeah, again. Right. Okay. Gosh, everyone's very quiet today. Anything more you can show that are ways to broaden the search for a rubric in addition to the, the slash, the and or feature? Oh, sure. Yes. So and a second question. How okay. does a reverse repertory search help when looking for a specific symptom in a remedy? Say that one more time, Maggie. How, how does a reverse repertory search help when looking for a specific symptom in a, re in a remedy? So really okay. how... How do yeah. we use it? All right, well, let's go into one of those first and then we'll get to the global search window next while I'm here. So I would go into books and I'd pull up a reversed repertory. Let's pull up um, the reliable reversed. Here it is. And um, <clears throat> you know, let's get back into Nox Vomica to stick the bear for a minute. And here we go, I'm gonna open that remedy in this reversed. And you can certainly scroll down to the cough chapter um, or you can get to it quickly by coming over here on the left side and you know clicking on cough. But you can also activate the cough here. Maybe there's more instances of you know, coughing in other chapters. So you maybe don't want to limit yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and activate cough again here. Let me do that. Let me back up and re-enter cough. Okay, so 210 instances. And it, it does take you through chapter because we, we're looking at all the chapters. Um, so in all the chapters, in the reliable reversed, there's 210 instances of cough. Right now, you can tell we're in the mind chapter, looking at anxiety during the cough. But you can, again, use these arrows up here to go to the next instance. And the next and the next. So that's how you would do that in the reversed um, repertory, find a, a symptom for a particular remedy by using this type to search window. All right, let's get to global search. I'm just trying to get my Zoom bar moved again. Sorry, there we go. Okay, what's some of the other language that will broaden a search up in global search? Um, I'm gonna show you something. Let's get rid of the or. Um, actually, okay. Um, let's do a different thing. Let's do, uh, Maggie, do you have any in mind? I'm trying to think of one that I haven't used before, it's, but I can do fear. Let's do fear animals. Okay, there. Fear animals. I'm going to activate the search. And you can see that you get now. Um, you, you're going to get the same thing in the repertory side of things, regardless of what you do up there. The proximity language is really for your Materia Medica. I just want to make that clear. Um, you, you know, the more proximity language you use, actually, you won't even get a repertory result. But you still will get one um, if you keep it simple, which I'll show you in a minute. Let's hop over to reference library. This is kind of where the proximity language, this is where the proximity language makes a difference. So when you put fear right next to animals, you get 234 remedies as a result. Now let's put some space between those two words. Let's put a three there and we're gonna activate this search in a new tab. Keep that number um, 234 in your mind for the result that came up in the last search. And I'm gonna open this in a new tab. And you can see the same, um, the same repertory result comes up, but let's hop over again to reference library. And now you see that you have more results because you've asked the program 
to look for fear in animals within three words of each other, not next to each other. So it's looking for um, those two words next to each other, but also within two and three words. And you can make it broader and broader by upping this number, um, but at some point it might become irrelevant. You can also look for fear within the same sentence. Whoops, well, sorry, got to do it this way. There you go. Fear within the same sentence of animals. Now, whenever you use that type of proximity language, you won't get, um, you won't get a, a repertory result. So we're going to open this in a new tab. And you see that broadened it even more. We're allowing the program to look at an entire sentence versus limiting within three words. So you get even a higher number there. And so that's, that's one way you can broaden the search, several ways you can broaden the search. Do you want to show the proximity drop-down menu in case people aren't familiar with the command? Oh, sure, yes. The way I got sentence there was I used my spacebar. That's the keyboard shortcut. Um, I hit it twice, because when you hit it once, it's just one space. When you hit it twice, it's um, sentence. But if you're not remembering that, come over here to this icon, and you can choose. So instead of me hitting the space bar, I could have come over here and clicked here and then gone ahead and typed animals like that. Um, would anyone like me to show <clears throat> the various, sorry. I do have a, another question here from Eileen who says, I get confused between the top icon and the one beneath it and where to type the word word. The top icon? <clears throat> I'm not really clear on you. Do you mean the top type to search window? <clears throat> Eileen, if you have anything else that you want to add to that? Um, so in searching, Lucy is using the panel there where she has fear of animals. This is the global search window, this bigger type of the biggest type of search window in the program is like the finger wing window in reference works. This is where you search um, for rubrics in Materia Medica up here. All the other type of search windows uh, are specific to that area. And so like what we said over here in the you're, I'm in a reference book. So this type of search window is specific to a reference book. The one that you're in, the, the active tab actually. And this type of search window is relevant to either books, if you have books ticked or remedies. See now I would have to type a remedy name to use this because that's what I've selected. So if I were to type uh, herrings now, I wouldn't get anything. Oh, well, I get, I get remedies, but let's say I type herring, no data, because I don't have books selected. So that's that window. Now, if you're in repertory module and you're in a chapter, and again, very specific to a chapter, there's this type to search window within a chapter. So in eyes, the eyes chapter, if I wanted to find all instances of blurry, no, not blurry, um, um, in, okay, let's do that, okay. So now I have found within the eye chapter using this very specific type to search window for this chapter, um, I have found every instance of the word inflamed. So I hope that helps to clarify the various types of search windows. And um, Lucy, can you go through, going back up to the search, global search bar at the top, the blue icons on the right-hand side, could you walk through those and explain okay. that? Okay, sure. 
So this one tells you, this is like the, the clock, the one that looks like a clock gives you your history of your searches. You can see. So if you've forgotten to open a new tab and you wanna go back to a search, this is the place to go. Um, and then this is your, any filtering you want to do. Now this is rather complex uh, when you have, when you have filtering in global search, you have to make some choices. You can choose repertories to filter in or reference library. So that's the filter icon. If you want, if you have just a simple filter, you don't have to use this. That's where you can, I think I've shown it in other trainings. I'm happy to show it again if somebody wants me to, but you can also filter right within the global search window. If you have one simple filter. This icon over here is good to open up and use if you are um, wanting to do a more, more complex filter. Let's say you want to filter for multiple remedies, or you want to filter for multiple sections, or you know things like that. Or you want to filter in one book for specific remedies. This is where you would do that over here in this complex filtering. And again, you have to choose reference library or repertories. But up here in global search, when you filter. Um, you, the result comes up in both, as long as you have both ticked over here. So that's the filter. And then this is, if you have a filter placed, let's say that you want to filter for Monica, and I'm going to hit apply. You see what happened when I hit apply, this turned purple. So you know you have a filter on when you see the purple circle anywhere in the program. You can see it here, you can see it in the clipboard, you can see it in repertory module, reference library. <clears throat> Anytime, anywhere in the program, you see a purple circle, it means a filter has been placed. Uh, to turn off a filter, you simply click on that purple circle and it turned it blue again, and now the filter is gone. Again, this icon is the proximity language that you can come over and use if you're not remembering a shortcut. This is the um, synonym finder. Let me show you now. <clears throat> this needs, um, this is something that needs a little bit of enhancement in our program currently. It's not, it's a work in progress. Not every word has a synonym. Let's see if fear does. Fear does. <clears throat> so if you, um, if you click on this, it gives you words related to the word, the, the, the last word that you've typed in the global search window. And you can either add, you know, a fright, maybe I would choose, you know, you can go down here and you can choose certain things. Um, horror. And you can either add them or you replace what you have there. Let's add them. You see what happens over in global search. Now I've got those two words with that or slashed, you know, the forward slash between them. So now the program is going to look for all three of those words the next time I activate a search. Um, so that's what that is. And then this question mark, anytime you see a question mark in the program, it leads you to the manual related to that area. So the question mark next to global search takes you to the global search um, information in the manual. Questions? Um, there's a question here from Christine. Um, she's talking about the lower search window. When would you just type at the bottom of the screen instead? And how are they different? I'm not really it sure sounds like that. you're. It sounds like you're thinking of MacRef, MacRef repertory, which had two ways to do. I could be wrong. Let, correct me if I'm wrong. But it had two ways to search in repertories. There was the gray bar at the bottom, and that's where you would find, a, you know, a, a main rubric. And then there was that to actual type to search window at the bottom, and that's where you'd find all instances of a word. Now, um, you, you don't have to position your, your mouse uh, anywhere to find the, let me, let me just walk you through that. So let's get out of this chapter and I'll go into the reliable. 
<clears throat> so we'll pop over here. Um, and I'm just gonna go to the mind chapter. Now you can click it over here with the icon or you can come over here. I have my program set up where I, I, I click on the chapter over here on the left. Uh, you can do, you can actually use your left arrow and very easily get back to the photo icons. And so if you prefer to click it over here, you can do that. And to find the main rubric, so that gray bar area in that repertory, uh, you don't position your mouse anywhere in SHS. You just simply, once you're in a chapter, you just type the first three letters of the rubric that you're thinking about. So let's think um, WOR, I typed on my keyboard. Now I'm pop, I'm pop, pop down, I was looking for worry. Um, and of course it has no, no remedies in it and there are no sub rubrics. And this will be an opportunity for me to come over here, turn on my cross references, hit okay. And find worry again. And you can see now it recommends that I go to anxiety or cares, worries, a lot. And so you see how I got to that rubric is just on the keyboard. I didn't, I didn't have to have my mouse anywhere. I just, just typed, once I was in a chapter, I just typed on my keyboard. And so once I'm in mind, cares, worries, let's go there. Once I'm in here, um, you know, that's, this is, this is a rubric that actually has remedies in it. This is one that you could take to a clipboard. I see those old clipboards are still hanging out over here. You can, of course, get rid of those by coming over here and closing your chart. Now, let's say I wanted to take this to a clipboard. I, I can either click, hold, and drag, or I can hit return. And you see a new clipboard has opened. Now, um, Let's say I wanted to find every instance of the word worry in the mind chapter. I'm gonna come up here to my type of search window. I'm gonna put worry in and I'm gonna hit return. And now you can see that it's given me rubrics that have the word worry in them. Um, it's, not that, it's not that the rubric started with that word, which, you know, but, the word worry is there. And so I can see every instance of the word worry. And, you know, maybe you wanna um, focus on cares. Again, it's so good to open your mind, you know, to uh, alternative words. So let's put the word cares. Let's see if we get any more. Yeah, you get a lot more, a lot more if you use that word than worries. Any more questions? We have 15 more minutes, so there's definitely time for, for more questions if there are any. Not just yet. Thank you. Nothing right now. Um, trying to think if there's something I can show you. Let's... People are probably familiar with the Zoom and the Zoom. What, Maggie? I can't quite hear you. I said people are probably familiar at this stage with the Zoom function. Oh, the Zoom in function? Yeah. Okay. So there are several ways to change your view to make it bigger or smaller. Come up here to view, and you can zoom in or out. Let's say you want to zoom in. So it's made it a little bigger. Um, I'm not as crazy about the zooming because it, you know, it, yeah, it brings you in and you can see, but then you can't see the entire rubric. So let's, um, let's go back out. Let's reset the zoom. I like better to um, go ahead and just change my rubric fonts. So right now I'm on 14. Let's say I wanted to make it smaller so I could see more rubrics per window. Now you can see it's a lot smaller. Maybe I want to make it bigger, 18. Now the rubric is bigger, you see, but the remedies are still small. So if you want them to be the same, come up here and you do the remedies at the same 18 points. So you can choose, you know, you, you can play around with that and see what you like best. And you can do the same thing in the, you can see in the clipboard, it's the same. Um, let's make 
that smaller. And now you can see that the one, the thing that says clipboard actually is, is graph. Um, that's something I want to talk to development about because this view changes your graph, your graph fonts, not your actual clipboard font, which you can see is still big over there on the left. Let's go back to big. Same thing under user preferences clipboard settings actually relates to your graph. This is where you change your graph colors, the squares. This is how you turn on that miasm line on your graph. And um, you can reset, reload. If I reload, it just reloads the program. Um, if I reset Zoom, that is if I had been zoomed in or out, you could also hit reset Zoom. Karen is asking, will the reload clear her clipboards to start a new patient? You know, let's do that. It, the program will ask you um, about saving the clipboard. So I'm reloading and it's going to, when it comes back, it's going to say, hey, you had a clipboard. Do you want to bring it back? There you go. SHS was closed without saving. Do you want to restore? Yes. And so there's your there's your clipboard. Great. And Diana is asking on the clipboard, can you please remind us what the numbers one, three mean? Oh, these right here. Uh, okay. Um, these are the grades, the grades of the remedies. So for instance, Argentum is grade three in the rubric mind cares worries full of you can see it you can see that also playing out here if i show you the um, remedies by grade um and you can see all those threes are the remedies that are in in blue here that they're all grade three uh, that are in blue in this rubric the ones that are in black um, lowercase underlined those are grade two as you can see it mirrors it over here and the ones without the underline down here at the bottom are the grade ones in this particular rubric. You can also order your remedies um, by alphabet here in the crack in the clipboard, and you can see it's all mixed up together now. Now it's alphabetical. So um, of course that didn't change the graph at all because the graph always comes in showing you um, with, with an analysis in mind. Hey, this is the biggest, these are the biggest, these are the strongest and down to the weakest. Um, but over here on the clipboard side, you can arrange your, um, you can show the view of looking at the remedies by alphabet. And that comes in like this. Um, Lucy, um, there's a question here. Could you put a few um, rubrics into the clipboard and show elimination? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go grab some. Close that. Um, I'm gonna go get anxiety. Um, and we'll come over here to the teeth chapter. Let's say there's some pain in the teeth, maybe. Right. And I'm using my back arrow to get back to the pictures. Um, let's go into the abdomen chapter. Let's say there's let's say there's that's like that's like noises, right? In the stomach, booba. I think I have to look that up. Um, what is booba? Does anybody know? Don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, and I'm using my left arrow again, left arrow again to come back to the photo icons, picture icons, and we'll say that there's some um, asthma, asthmatic in the morning. Okay, so we've got certain rubrics. And again, if, if you don't want to use the arrows to get back to the photo icons, the picture icons, you can just always open this up 
and switch chapters this way. Okay, so we've got several rubrics in the clipboard. Now I did a video on elimination by, by the way, a short. It's up there in the um, SHS 1.3 shorts. But let's run through it. I'm going to turn off these remedies, no remedies, and because like it's hard to see the um, it's hard to see the rubrics if you have all the remedies turned on in the clipboard. All right, and so the whole point of elimination elimination basically means you're crossing. You're wanting to cross several rubrics. Let's say you you've got you know you've analyzed your case and you, you think to yourself, boy, this symptom is very important, and so is this one. So the remedy I give, I definitely want it to be in those rubrics. And so I want to cross those rubrics and see what remedies are, um, you know, are, are in both of the rubrics. So let's say that the tooth pain at night, you've determined in your mind that for the case, tooth, tooth pain at night is, is very important. And so is the, um, so is the, the note. well, let's do the, let's do the mind. I'm going to select the two. I'm going to hold down the command key to get those extras selected. And I'm going to drag them up to the minus sign first. And then I'm going to click on the minus sign to open that up. This elimination window is showing you only those two rubrics that you chose. There's a minus sign next to them. That means they are actively crossing. Um, and you can see that between all the remedies that were in those rubrics, 120 for the CARES, 76 for the tooth pain, 35 are in common. And you can show those common remedies by clicking on show. There they are, they're, they're, those are the 35. You can also see them in graph form. I'm gonna hit show graph. So now you're looking at all the remedies, but you can see here that the mind cares um, full love and the tooth pain. Um, you know, those, those are the two you selected. It's, it, the program is also showing you the interplay of, of the other rubrics, um, but you do see the, the, the two that you chose here. And you can scroll to the um, back and just, you know, you can just see how it all plays out. Now, what's the plus sign for? Let's take a look at that because I had to have this explained to me. It was not, it was a little confusing at first, but I finally got it. So in the um, plus sign, you've got those two as well. Let's say you want to, now, now you're gonna show an even deeper interplay between all the rubrics where uh, you see it over here certainly, but we're gonna look at it in a different way. So I'm just gonna close that for a minute and I'm gonna, get that filter off, get that elimination view off by clicking on the purple circle. And I'm going to, um, the ones that we didn't take up were anxiety, this, 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 and this. So those were the ones we hadn't taken up before. So I selected them. I'm gonna take them up to the plus sign now. I'm gonna click on that. Um, and you can see those two that I selected are there. They're minus, they're actively crossing. But now you can see all the other rubrics are in this window. They have plus signs next to them because we're not actively, actively crossing them. But they're there. And the program is now going to show you the inter the active interplay, more active interplay. Um, and it's interesting because it's the number is still 35. I've if you go watch the video, you'll see that. Seven, seven remedies were shaved out of the, um, the whole view because there were, um, there were several rubrics that did not have, uh, that, that, that were not being crossed, did, that, that did not contain the, the seven remedies that were seen at the end of the graph. But this one will be the same. And do go watch the video because it will explain what I'm trying to talk about here. Um, you're still seeing that same 35 here, so um, no change, but, and I think that's because of this three there. 
Any questions on that? Another thing about this, let me just show you one more thing. Um, another thing about taking them all up here to the plus sign is that you can switch them around. Let's say that you decide you wanna add, you wanna add a rubric. Um, you wanna add the bubo in there. I'm gonna click on that plus sign, turn it into a minus sign. Now I'm crossing all three. So that's the benefit of taking all the rubrics to, into the plus sign is that you can, you can play around with them. You can turn them into, turn the pluses to minuses uh, very easily and add some to the cross or take them out as well. See, when I added this one, now only 11 are common to those three rubrics. We'll show the graph here and you can see. And if I were to, let's say that I wanted to take away the mind cares and now the elimination is 21. You see how you can do that. You just click on the plus or minus sign to make it a crossing rubric or not a crossing rubric. And so now we're crossing the teeth pain with the bubo. We're gonna show the graph there. We've got 21 that cross those two rubrics. So ho hopefully that made it clear. And there is also the video. I have put the URL for the elimination video in the chat. Oh, box. thanks, Maggie. Thank you, Lucy. If there are no other questions, we have hit the top of the hour. No mm -hmm. other questions? No. Okay. Well, thank you all for coming. I appreciate it so much. And the next training, it will be an intermediate advanced training on March 31st. Um, we, we pushed it to the end of the month because Rupali will be attending the Joint American Homeopathic Conference um, the week that, you know, weekend of the 24th, 5th, and 6th. And so it's her training is for this is going to be at the end of the month. Um, she is going to be doing a workshop on the 23rd. And you can, you can, you know, come in person and day early and attend in person and Rupali will help with any, you know, cases. It's a cases workshop. You can also attend online. And it would be the same time as today's time. No, the workshop. Uh, no, sorry. Are, sorry, the training on the, on the 31st of the 3rd? It will be. I know that we have a time change this weekend, but we do keep the trainings uh, at 11, uh, sorry, at 10 a.m. Eastern because we know that people are all over the world attending these. And so, um, oh, let me think about that. I'll have to talk to Rupali because now that I think about it, if it's, if it's 10 o'clock our time, then I think it would be an hour earlier for everybody else. So um, let me talk to Rupali. We want, we want to keep it as simple as possible. Uh, we'll be, I'll send out a notification about it if there's a time change. Okay. Okay. Let me make a note to myself. Yep, those time changes do do get in the way sometimes. They make things a little complicated. So, all right, everybody. Thanks so much for attending, and have a great rest of your rest of your week and weekend. And we'll see you next time.